So you joined Marks & Spencer a couple of years ago with the task of affecting change through data and analytics. Talk a little bit about your journey so far and what changes you've implemented and the results that you're seeing. Yeah, so the, um, the, the whole idea of um, coming into M&S was to, um, is to help move data um, to the heart of the business and heart of the decision making. Um, uh, it's a very data rich business as all retail is and has always been good at um, taking data where it needs to go. But with, with the capabilities that now exist in technology, there's, a, there's an opportunity to take that a step forward. So um, one of the first, the first kind of um, activities, if you like, was to try and look at what technology out there um, can support our, our aim and our goal to put um, data at the heart of the business and our customer at the heart of the business um, to really become kind of uh, customer uh, driven. So from kind of product centric to customer centric to product driven. And um, so we, we kind of looked at the market to try and understand what technology is, is there to support what we're trying to do. Um, but not only technology, we had to look at what kind of ways of working, what um, uh, different kind of um, agile methodologies, what different people capabilities um, and ways of working would we need to bring in to then also take that kind of technology and actually make some good use out of it. Um, so some of the things we've done is to, is to bring in some Hadoop technology. Uh, some of the things we've done is to bring in some uh, capability into a kind of a core digital big data engineering team um, that enables us to kind of ingest these, these data sets um, and service them up to a, a group of analysts across the business to find insight and drive, ultimately drive value. And what challenges have you encountered along the way, and what are you facing now? Um, I guess um, I guess with it's slightly disruptive what we're doing in terms of new ways of working. That's change um, involves kind of re-anchoring people in terms of what um, the ways of working that we've had before. Uh, open source technology is a, is a different kind of mindset, and both from a, a technology. Um, uh, support and operations perspective, but also even from things like uh, the contracts that you sign and the service wrap that you put around the technology. So some of the some of the challenges is is how do we um, be constructively disruptive rather than just disruptive with what we're doing, um, and um, and that and that ultimately that is about bringing people with you rather than just forcing the change through. Um, so the different ways of working, the different technologies, the way we operate it, the way we um, want to push data out to people and potentially external has been some of the ways that we've trying to kind of ensure that we bring the pe bring people with us, uh, whether that's business, whether that's senior, or senior, whether that's our operations capability and, and all these sorts of things. Can you give a concrete example of constructive disruption? Uh, yeah, so let's have a think. Um, we, a um, good example is um, traditionally you'd have um, a project team building out an application and then you'd hand that over to a support team to um, look after it in a kind of a run state, in an operation state. Um, what we've built is a, uh, a DevOps team, which is effectively responsible for both developing and operating the application. Uh, that's a totally different mindset for um, the IT organization, um, which are, who are embracing it, um, where the team that built it is also operating it, and how do we ensure that we've got the right balance of, of kind of SLA and operations around the platform, um, but also giving us the flexibility and agility to um, innovate and, and bring new ways of working to the table. Um, so disruptive, but in a constructive way that enables us to deliver both um, the kind of what the, the speed of execution that you need around analytics, but also in a supportable and constructive way. That's interesting. And so taking a, a bigger picture look, how would you describe the impact data is having on retail? How is it changing retail and to what extent? Yeah, so one of the things that we, we look to do um, is center our, um, our model around customer. So I talked about kind of product uh, centric to customer centric to customer driven. And um, one of the, the, the biggest things we've looked to do is to um, understand the, the kind of customer journey between the various channels. Um, and um, and that's in, that involves looking at n not only the kind of traditional transactional activity that our customers um, uh, carry out with us, whether that's in store or online, but also look at the slightly more different kind of data sets that we can get through. So things like clickstream, the browse behavior on our website where it doesn't necessarily result in a purchase, but it gives us real insight into um, how people choose to shop our website and whether that's 
individual to that person or whether that's because the way that we've designed things but it gives real insight into what people do so actually if we if we see customers who um, who shop our website but ultimately don't order anything we may then still see them ordering or buying from our from our store so being able to bring that data together for the first time has enabled us to kind of truly see that end-to-end -end shopping behavior and start to understand things like um, how do you attribute um, the revenue that we get from customers um, to the various channels that they that they shop in, but ultimately where they make the final purchase isn't necessarily the place that drove the purchase in the first place. So it's kind of given us an interesting uh, platform to drive from. It's by, it's by focusing um, down on kind of customer and where can we understand that customer. And what that gives is, uh, is the opportunity to, um, to build out and answer some, some real insightful questions. So things like, um, what's the channel mix between um, our customers shop us and ultimately what's the value of investing in something like mobile um, and the mobile platform um, looking at um, pro uh, product returns and where customers return products to us um, traditionally looking at transactional data you can see that customers return but actually if you look at the the product reasons that the return reasons that people give to us when they um, when they return something on uh, from online you can start to blend the kind of textual information with the transactional information to get a much better picture of why people are returning certain products. Um, so those sorts of pro uh, projects are the things that we um, that we focus on um, to give us that slightly bigger picture. Um, but then we start to look at how can understanding customer impact our supply chain? How can understanding the customer um, drive the forecast for which product, uh, how much to range in each store? So it gives us like a real rich picture of, of, of um, something that can touch all parts of our business. Oh, that's interesting. And so what's next? What has caught your attention in the retail space in general that you might like to try at Marks & Spencer? Um, I think, um, again, it's all about customer for us. Um, so how, how can we be um, personal and relevant um, and, and build kind of a real brand engagement? So Marks & Spencer are in a very fortunate position to have a, a strong brand presence. Um, in the UK and growingly um, internationally as well. Um, we're in 50, 50 or so territories. So how do, we, um, how do we use what we now know to really drive a strong bond with our customers and give that personalized one-to-one -one service? So everything around personalization um, and, and relevance to our customers is the, is, the, is the really big thing that we want to go after. Okay, and so to close our conversation, I want to end with a broad question. What people or projects are you following? What are you finding personally intriguing these days? Um, well, uh, given I'm at uh, uh, an event right now, I think some of the stuff that's been really interesting um, over the last couple of days is um, uh, kind of taking applied, applied maths and data science to the next level to drive out kind of things around machine learning. So we've got really clever people doing some really clever stuff, um, but actually can you take that a step forward and, and set up the capability so that the machines are doing some really clever stuff and we can free up our clever people to to kind of think about the next thing and move, and move the agenda forward so things around machine learning i think are really interesting um, uh, but also things about then how do you automate the decisions that are made um, and automated data-driven decision making is something that's really uh, piqued my interest certainly at this event um, and and being much more um, uh, much speedier about the decisions that you make um, and not relying on kind of bias that people have and, and things that normally get in the way of decisions. So I tend to follow um, anything in the big data space um, and analytics space that helps me to accelerate the journey and, um, and really drive, drive home um, the kind of whole agenda that we're, we're and the journey that we're going on to put data at the heart of the business. Excellent. Thank you very much for talking with me today. No problem.